Now, Tommy, I've just been reading about Alan Bond. He's, he's got the flick. It's terrible, isn't well, it? He's in a bit of alleged trouble, Papa. Oh, that's right. Alle he's allegedly got the flick. <laughs> yes, that's and right. And, of course, uh, Channel 9 is allegedly without anyone holding the reins at the moment. Allegedly, and, yeah. Uh, I was thinking, I reckon, I reckon I could probably do a pretty good job of running the network. Really? What do you reckon we oh. give them a call and, and see if they're good interested? Idea. Let's ring Channel 9. Have you got the number there, Phil? Yeah. There we go. Piling away. There'll probably be no one up at this time in the morning. Oh, there might be. Brian Beery will be He'll there. He'll be in there, of I course. I think he'll be able to Bondy speak could be there. To us. Bondy himself might hmm. be there. Probably Let's cleaning see. or something. Any uh, calls there? For... Oh, there we go. Just coming through now. Oh, yes, there's the familiar sound. Channel 9, good morning. Uh, hello, is that Channel 9? Mm -hmm. uh, my name's Fatman, uh, Barry Fatman. I was wondering if I could speak to Alan Bond. <laughs> Alan Bond doesn't seem to be here at the moment. Can I take a message? Oh, you've cleared out his office already, have you? Yeah. Oh, right. Well, now that he's got the sack, I was just wondering if I could apply for the job of interim caretaker of the network. Um, Would that be possible? Uh, well, you can apply to our personnel department if you like. Yeah, because I've got some really good ideas. I think Ernie Sigley should be used a lot more. You think so? Yeah, and the home shopping show. Do you remember that one? I do. Do you think that should come back? I reckon it should. Uh, that's a very popular show. It wasn't a very popular... Well, I used that's to watch it. popular. It was very popular. Yes. Well, see, there you go. See, that's where Bondy stuffed up. He got rid of the Bu the Bury Home Shopping Show. Mm. He should have kept it on, and he probably wouldn't be in the poo that he's in today. <laughs> well, uh, so should I probably phone back and work hours or something? Yes, you should. You can't put... You haven't got his home number. Well, no, I don't say. He's in Fiji or something, isn't he? I'm not quite sure. I can probably contact him through the Pinochet government in Chile. Would that be right? <laughs> I can't say sorry. Okay, well, thanks for speaking to me. Okay, then. Bye-bye. I seem to have a lot of graffiti around my place saying, meat is murder. It's all over the place. Meat is murder. And, uh, listeners, if meat is murder, then yoghurt must be burglary. And, Fat Man, a big evening of TV last night with the screening of that controversial doco drama, Police State. The cops, of course, wanted um, to prevent it being shown. They did quite a good job. They got it shown on the ABC, but I think some people still saw it. One of the people that sort of didn't come out in a terribly good light was former Queensland Premier Sir Joe Bjorki peterson We've got him in the studio right now. Sir Joe, what did you think of the program? Oh, look, you you people know as well as yourself that these communists of the ABCD, they continue time and time again to come up with these uh, concoctions and prefabrications about uh, Queensland, the sunshine seed, big pineapple, whatever you like to term it, and they can continue to go on these people, homosexuals, until they're black and blue in the face and all the chickens have come home before you, you can say Jack uh, Robin, Jack, uh, Jack, Jack Robinson. It's as simple as that. Uh, Sir Joe, it, it presented a fairly damaging picture of uh, your years as Premier. Ah, uh, yeah, would you say that? But I tell you, these people, the socialists, uh, what they need is a taste of what's happening down there in China. The, the uh, Premier over there, he's a close... A uh, personal friend of mine, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jing Chong Ping Pong, he's got the right idea. He's sending in the tanks, squashing all the homosexuals. That's the way to take care of these things, my goodness. Yes. 24 minutes past eight, and I'm still recovering from what I saw on the ABC last night. I tuned in and watched the Riddle of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which uh, Mr. Fred Nile's been getting all stroppy about. The documentary claimed that uh, Christ's miracles were early conjuring tricks, all done with mirrors and trapdoors. The Lord himself was a kind of biblical Ian Buckland, and apparently there was a whole chapter cut out from the New Testament which revealed that Christ, in fact, had an assistant, Sabrina, who worked with him at the Feast of Cana. In fact, I quote, And lo, Sabrina brought forth the volunteer from the audience, and the Lord spaketh, saying unto him, Be this your watch, sir. Yes, it is, replied the Samaritan, and the people did gnash their teeth in amazement. Be this your wallet, continued the Saviour, and verily did the capacity lunchtime crowd ooh and ah, for twas indeed a miracle. Soon followed there much juggling and escaping from handcuffs and soaring in half of those who had definitely never met the Lord before, until finally did the only begotten son proclaim, now draweth I the lucky door prize, and then in a flash was he gone, returning only the following Tuesday for a two o'clock matinee. Now, Colonel, you're hiding the lady Colonel's Easter egg again? Yeah, I certainly am. This Can I just give you a little uh, tip, a little bit of advice? Tell me, Graham, what? Don't put it in the oven again. <laughs> oh, no, it's behind the heater this year. Oh, good. <laughs>
Uh, Colonel, a little segment we've uh, I'd like to announce. Yes, uh, Kev, can we? This is our uh, fantastic Easter flashback segment. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to pay tribute to that Jesus Christ fellow. Oh, what? What a dynamo! Guts and determination, I, Colonel. I call him Mr. Easter. He was nailed to a cross. They chucked the spear into him. No support from his teammates. Yep, none One at all. One of the soldiers even gave him vinegar to drink. Now that sucked him in back because he thought it was stamina. He was gone. They said they'd written him off. He was taken from the ground on a stretcher. The team physio said there was no hope. But what did Mr. Easter do? What? He came back three <laughs> days later. Look, I know some blokes with bad hammies who couldn't come back after six months. Oh, I tell you what, a few of those Romans would have faced the tribunal that week. Oh, what's worse for them, Neil Bissy, the crucifying judge, was on the panel? <laughs> <laughs> but let's get back to the man. Jesus Christ, full marks to him. I reckon Jesus is God. Kevin, please. Yeah, well, that's a marvellous rep to give a saviour. <laughs> uh, well, I've been looking for some serious news, Kevin, so I've got the truth. Oh, right. And, uh... Now you're talking. There's a big story on the front, as you can see, Kylie Michael Street Fracker. Apparently, uh, Kylie Minogue and Michael Hutchins beat up a photographer for the, uh, from the truth, which isn't a bad thing. <gasps> yes. But um, what happened was, I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, uh, apparently, it happened in Oxford Street, 2.30 in the afternoon. Said the photographer, I spotted them from a cab. They were parking Hutchinson's, uh, Hutchinson's, that's the man, uh, flashy Harley Davidson motorbike. I jumped out and grabbed four shots of them. Kylie saw me and stormed over. She was really angry and yelled out, F dot 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 off. <laughs> now, goodness me, what do you think that could have been? Frig off? Uh, no, Actually, no, she no, probably wouldn't have said it, would she? She would have mimed it and somebody else sort of <laughs> down the street would have said that. <laughs> apparently, uh, apparently uh, Michael was uh, at the time putting his motorbike on its stand. He was probably putting the trainer wheels on for, <laughs> so that Kylie could drive it home afterwards. He uh, saw what happened, came rushing over. He slapped me over the head and called me an F dot 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 C dot dot dot. <laughs> now, I think an F dot 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 C dot 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 is actually a professional qualification for a truth photographer. Yesterday morning on this program, something happened which may have been construed as less than tasteful. <laughs> During Lou Richards' often informative football report, a number of sound effects were broadcast which, it could be argued, were not entirely necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to take this opportunity to emphasise the view that bodily eructations are in themselves inherently humorous is not one which is subscribed to by everyone working on this program. Oh, excuse me. I've always wanted to go to the Vatican just so that I could uh, run into the Pope in one of the corridors and say, fancy meeting you here. Always wanted to do that. I've been on the blower chewing the fat with the PM, Mr Hawke. Ooh. As you know, he's, uh, he's been in the wars of late, both politically and medically. He's had a spot of trouble in the Grampians, as it were, in the nether regions. He's, he's had a fair bit of reconstructive surgery on the old John Thomas, so understandably he was a little bit peaky when I spoke to him this morning. He was tetchy, irritable, he was waxing incoherent, and at several points in the conversation had to nip off to the gents to empty the bag. But uh, during the course of our little chat, he confessed to me, he said, fat man, I'm not the prime minister I used to be. The wife's best friend's been through the ringer. I've been probed and excavated and extruded, and frankly, it's affecting my work. I can't lead this nation of ours, this great true blue, green and gold, flat brown country round the corner and into the 21st century with wonky wedding tackle. <laughs> and he went on to say, what hurt the most were the jokes, all the smart-ass comments people have been making around the corridors of Parliament House talking about private members' bills and passing motions and so on and so forth. And he said the worst ones were coming from his closest mate, Paul Keating. And I couldn't believe this. I couldn't believe it. And I said to him, give us a sample, Hawkey. And he said, oh, not you too, fat man, and hung up on me. Uh, hello, is that the people at the wireless? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Yes. Look, I'm phoning about that mob you've got working with you, the degenerators. Uh, generation, yeah. Yes, yes, Kevin. Uh, is that Kevin? Y yes, it is. Yes, look, you sound like a sensible young man. Can't you say something to them? Yeah, well, it's, it's, what, what? Just, it's a carry-on. That's what it is. It's a carry-on. I mean, I enjoy a good laugh with the best of them. I do. I relish a good laugh. In fact, my wife and I put aside time each evening for a laugh. At 7.30, sure. after the sale of the century, yeah. we sit down and we desperately try and think of something funny. We sit there, concentrating, sometimes for hours. And then when one of us thinks of something amusing, we have a laugh about it, and that's that. We put it behind us. But right. these degenerators are just... They're knocking, always knocking the sacred cows. It's unnecessary. And the language. The lang what did I hear yesterday? Flipping. The flipping <laughs> lawnmowers on the blink, someone said. Oh. Goodness. I mean, it's not clever. No, their manners. They've left them at the 
said, oh, that's what they've done, Kevin. What they need is a dose of national service. A couple of wars, it'd do them good. Let them try and be funny with a Turkish bayonet wedged between the buttocks. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can't do it, Kevin. It's impossible. I've tried it.